Hello class, Mr. Sutton here. Today we are going to be uh, talking about skill nine, which is absolute value equations. So in your notes, some things we want to write down about absolute value. The definition is the distance from zero. So if we are thinking about numbers on a number line, we have zero. And let's say we want to set an absolute value of 5. The absolute value of 5 is 5, right? And that's the distance from 0. If you think about the absolute value of negative 7, that would be 7, right? 7 spaces from 0. It's not negative 7 from 0, right? Distance is always positive. So really that's what we're doing with absolute value is we just take the number, and if it's positive, we keep it positive. If it's negative, we make it positive. This is the notation. So it's whatever your number is, and then you put your absolute value bars on each side. So some examples, you'd say like the absolute value of five, like we talked about before, is five. So absolute value of five equals five. Absolute value of negative seven equals seven, all right? So make sure you have this in your notes. Now let's look at solving absolute value equations. Now there's an important step for solving absolute value equations, and that is what you wanna do is when you have the absolute value by itself on one side, your next step is to take the inside of that, a plus 29 in this case, and set it equal to the other side of the equation. And then do that same thing, a plus 29, and set it equal to the opposite side of this, which is negative 47. And you wanna set up both of these equations and solve them both independently. Now, the reason we do that is because this business that's inside of the absolute value, the argument of the absolute value, it could be positive or negative, right? We don't know if this number that's in here, a plus 29, we don't know if it's positive or negative. The absolute value takes away that negative sign, right? So we have to think about both possibilities. So that is what we are doing here, both possibilities. Um, this could either equal 47 or it could equal negative 47 because we know that the absolute value of 47 equals 47. And we also know the absolute value of negative 47 equals 47. So we have to consider the possibility that a plus 29 is 47 and also the possibility that a plus 29 is negative 47. So we're going to have two answers here. So I'm going to go ahead and solve these two equations. So for both of these, all you had to do to solve was subtract 29 on both sides. You should have gotten a equals 18 and a equals negative 76. So to write your answer, and this is how it wants you to write it in Delta math. Uh, first, it'll have a a equals, and then it's just blank. But once you start typing in, you'll notice these brackets pop up. And then you want to type in one of your answers, comma, followed by your other answer. And I like to keep them from least to greatest. I think that makes the most sense, um, but shouldn't matter the order because they are both answers. So this is how you would write your answer. Um, but in Delta Math, it'll look more like this, where you just have to fill in the blanks. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and look at this next one. So again, that first step we have here, since the absolute value is already by itself on one side of the equation, we can go ahead and say negative 4x plus 4 equals positive 44, and also negative 4x plus 4 equals a negative 44. All right. 
Uh, and again, the reason for that is, is because we know that po the absolute value of positive 44 equals 44 and the absolute value of negative 44 equals 44. So we have to consider the possibility that negative 4x plus 4 is positive 44 and the possibility that negative 4x plus 4 is negative 44. So I'm going to go ahead and solve these and see what I get for x. You do the same. So I got x equals negative 10 and x equals 12. So my answer would be x equals negative 10 and 12. All right. Uh, and you can also check this by plugging these back into your original equation here, seeing what you get. So if I plug in negative 10, you have negative 4 times negative 10, which is 40, plus 4 is 44. Um, and so you would get 44 inside the absolute value. So the absolute value of 44 is 44. Uh, and then if you plug in 12, you get 12 times negative 4, which is negative 48, plus 4 is negative 44. And then the absolute value of negative 44 is 44. So if it helps you to do that mentally, or if you want to write out all the steps and just make sure that you have uh, your right answer, uh, then please do that. Just make sure you don't forget the absolute value step. All right, so these are a little trickier. Um, and what you want to do for these, the important thing to do is make sure you get the absolute value solved by itself on one side of the equation first. So we want to get to plus 10, or we want to get to the absolute value of 10 plus 3x equals something over here. And then once we do that, then we can jump to the step where we have 10 plus 3x equals the positive thing and 10 plus 3x equals the negative thing. But before we do that, we have to make sure we get rid of these things that's outside of the uh, absolute value of 10 plus 3x. Uh, so we want to go ahead and do some solving first, and then we can get to all of this. Okay. So the first thing we want to do is we want to get rid of this 8 that's attached by addition. So we would subtract. 8 on both sides, and then we'd have 2 times the absolute value of 10 plus 3x, and then 8 minus 8 is 0, 10 minus 8 is 2. Now we have this 2 times the absolute value of 10 plus 3x, and remember we're trying to get the absolute value of 10 plus 3x by itself on one side of the equation, so we want to get rid of that 2, and since it's attached by multiplication here, we want to divide both sides by 2. So over here, the 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So 1 times absolute value of 10 plus 3x is just the absolute value of 10 plus 3x. And then once again over here, 2 divided by 2 is just 1. So we can leave that as 1. Now this looks like the kinds of equations we had before, where we have just the absolute value on this side of the equation. So now we know this equals 1, but we don't know uh, does the 10 plus 3x equal 1 or negative 1. We don't know that because it's inside the absolute value. So now we got to go to that absolute value step of setting 10 plus 3x equal to 1 and 10 plus 3x equal to negative 1. Because it could be either of those because it's inside the absolute value. And then now from here, we can go ahead and solve for x. So we'd have to subtract 10 and divide by 3, subtract 10, divide by 3. I'm going to go ahead and pause and finish this solve on my own. You do the same. So when I solved, I got x equals negative 3 and x equals negative 11 thirds. Now that's not a very nice looking answer, but that's okay. That happens. And we can just leave this as negative 11 thirds. I know a lot of you like to convert things to decimals, uh, but this doesn't reduce at all. And the decimal is negative 3.6666666. Repeating, to me, this is nicer than writing that, right? And what we don't want to do is we, we don't want to say x is negative 3.6. 7, because that's not true, right? This is a decimal approximation. This is rounding, right? We rounded here. Really, this should be 666 six, six going on, going on. 
Uh, so that's why I think the fractional answer is better here. Uh, so we can go ahead and leave our answer like this, and we just want to say x equals negative 11 over 3 and negative 3. That's not a bracket. Like that. And negative 11 over 3 is actually just a little bit less than negative 3, so I put it in front here. But the key difference to this problem is we did not set this equal to 10 and negative 10 right away. We had to do some solving first because we want to get this absolute value by itself on one side of the equation. So we subtracted the 8 and then divided by 2. And then we were able to go to that step of saying 10 plus 3x equals 1 and 10 plus 3x equals negative 1. So make sure you don't forget that. Let's go ahead and look at another one like this just for good measure. So we want to get the absolute value by itself on one side of the equation first, and then we can split it up into two equations and solve for x. So to get the absolute value by itself on one side of the equation, we have to get rid of this uh, minus 10. We also have to get rid of this multiplied by negative 5. So we want to get rid of the minus 10 first. Add 10 on both sides. Then you have negative 5 times 5x minus 1, negative 10 plus 10 is 0, negative 10 plus 10 is negative 40. Now we have the multiply by negative 5. We can get rid of that by dividing by negative 5. Negative 5 divided by negative 5 is 1. 1 times absolute value of 5x minus 1 is just the absolute value of 5x minus 1. And then negative 40 divided by negative 5 is 8. Now we have the absolute value of 5x minus 1 equals 8. So we can go ahead and split it into two equations because we just have the absolute value by itself on one side of the equation, like the problems we did earlier. So we would have 5x minus 1 is 8, and 5x minus 1 equals negative 8. So I'm going to go ahead and solve this. For x, you do the same. So for both of these, you'd add 1 and then divide by 5, add 1, then divide by 5. Once again, we get not nice answers, but that's okay. We are fine with fractions. Uh, so, and I'm just going to leave these as they are. These you can convert to decimal because uh, they do come out nicely. 9 divided by 5 is 1.8. Negative 7 divided by 5 is negative 1.4. Uh, so no rounding necessary there. Uh, but I think the fractions are just fine. And why create the extra step of converting to decimals when a fraction works just as well? So there's your answer. X equals negative 7 over 5 and 9 over 5. One last type of problem here. And here we are uh, evaluating them as functions. So this time we are plugging in a value for x. So determine the value of y if x is 6. So we want to plug in 6 for x. So we got to think about what the absolute value of 6 is. How far away is 6 from 0? Absolute value of 6 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3. So that's all you'd have to do for that one. And then here you have determine the value of y if x is negative 11. So we want to plug in negative 11 for x here. So we have y equals the absolute value of negative 11 minus 4. What is the absolute value of negative 11? That would be positive 11. Negative 11 is 11 units away from 0. So that's positive 11 minus 4, and 11 minus 4 is 7. So our answer here would be 7. All right, and that is all I have for you today. If you have any questions about this, make sure you are asking for help in class or coming to your teacher's office hours. Have a good day, and I will see you in class if I have you.